diesel fuel, kerosene, <clears throat> pardon me, kerosene, uh, $3.79 down there at the Shell Station. I'm just saying if you need kerosene, they've got it. Uh, the, uh, the Shell Station South, about halfway down yonder. $3.79 was the price per gallon. But it makes no sense whatsoever. But I did it. Uh, <laughs> you know, now I question it, I guess. A uh, two ton trolley or a uh, horse crane. A one ton crane and a two ton trolley. Makes a lot of sense, don't it? Yeah. Just saying. I'm not going to be a hollering and a jumping around, you know, uh, man. But we'll get some stuff done. Well, we got that circus, uh, just to mention a, a couple, we got that uh, circus wagon with this circus car engine moniker because it's going to go on the circus wagon. But uh, we got the wheels primed, so we need. To, I, I'm going to get onto them bolsters. See, that's what I should do now, <clears throat> but that's an upcoming project. Uh, I got that. That was an air tank. Th there was a question on the channel. Probably could use this two hour condensed down to 10 minute video. Like, uh, a comment was uh, uh, the dude, I think, had a had an engine that, uh, that the pipe come down out of it. Uh, well, hmm. See, that's what we're going to have to deal with during the episode is to find things. But for an example, or, or or just to tell you about it, and instead of finding a something to show you, and there's one right there, but on the head here on these McCormick Deer International M's, that uh, it's a street elbow. It goes in the bottom down there, and your pipe comes out, and then the original muffler will go on there. So. Lots of times, a good many, most, that street elbow gets rusted into that head there. And, and all you do is you take a, you saw it off. You know what I mean? Just saw it off and, and take a, uh, uh, chisel. And, uh, I think it's a cake chisel. You know, it's only, it's a chisel that only cuts on one side at an angle. And you just cut away the inside of the pipe with that thing. And I got one out there to do, so we'll get that in here and do that with a, with a project. You, you can log that in there. It's that three horse pair. Got that engine up there in Ohio. I need to get the head off of that because I think it got water in it. So, we'll, we'll, we'll that'll be a evening. You know, when the sun's out, we'll get that that, that done. But, and, and that, uh, this mag, Magneta, the, uh, <clears throat> one of the projects in the meantime is we need to charge a couple of Magnetos uh, and drag out this big, this big, it's a real one, you know. Drag out, not 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 this little not this little baby thing up here. And and and, and, and two <clears throat> on uh, I think on that Harry's old engine 
you, you know, you can go up on a website there and they talk about engines uh, on a forum. Check it out. But but I was attributed to, to build a small magneto charger, magnet charger one time uh, on a video. And I didn't build that magnet charger. That was a Jim White built uh, magnet charger. Uh, he sold them for years. And I think they're listed in Gas Engine Magazine at present. Not sure. Check it out. But this is one, and I have it down at the house, <clears throat> but this is one that is hand built. I didn't build this one. And it's the same thing, but somebody put about three times as many windings on it as the Jim White model. Everything else is the same. It works really good. And the more windings, the better. So and that's all I'm gonna say about that. Because here is the professional one. This is the one that made the magneto that you're trying to charge. This this one right here. It costs a lot of money. A great lot of money. But you can see how much copper is in there. And uh, but but we'll get that out and uh, and, and and look about the uh, you know what brand it is and all. And we'll charge the magneto. But I do need, and I tell you what, <clears throat> I, I, pro I, probably, I probably can make a set, but the book calls for a, a 1019 steel, well, you, you know, a 1018 is close enough for me, I think, but, but I need a set of pole pieces to go on here that has the, 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 the radius, the circle pattern, of the Maytag flywheel that they made a set that went with this uh, magnet charger and uh, and I don't have them so you know, you know a, a lead on where I might get a set of those even a factory made set you know uh, will be great assistance the steel needs to be like I'm gonna say one inch thick would be perfect. And it would just be a piece, you know, like four inches. It's simple enough to do on a rotary table, I think. You know. But it would just be a straight piece of steel if I could describe it to myself. Come down, you know, say, uh, well, uh, four inches long, let's say. A, a piece of flat steel four inches long and at the bottom down here it would have a slot you, you know a slotted bolt hole uh would it <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure about that but one of them goes on one side and one goes on the other side and it's a it's a half moon part on each side to, it's a quarter moon it's a quarter moon shape almost what it is <clears throat> and that's the way you get that radius is to visualize that circus circle and then draw a cross inside of it and you need the two pieces over here but let that circle come straight down and then cut it straight across here and then you slice a gap out of that so that when you put them on that <clears throat> I'll describe it to you before we get to use it. When you put it on this thing right here, you put them right here like that, and it fits the north and south pole of the magneto. So, but anyway, we'll we, <laughs> we'll uh, uh, th this thing right here. I mean, it puts a full charge in them. Uh, I, I was going to make a joke, you know, something funny about that I use this big one right here to charge them little ones up, but you don't do that. You know, you want it to go dead immediately. Uh, if any, and and that's, a, that's a good thing about this, is the steel that they use right there don't have any remaining magnetism. When you well, <clears throat> We'll talk about that later. Um, costs a lot of money. 
But well, we got some engines put together, and 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 it's 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 I don't it's not well it's going to be <clears throat> we'll get it done in parts, but I'm going to put I think on this swivel workbench right here, I think I'm going to put that uh, 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 understrike engine. There, there's two possibilities. I have another engine, like that red engine, that hot rod special right there, <laughs> world famous. Let me say. Uh, I built that engine about seven years ago, a little bit more, going on maybe eight. But uh, rust oleum paint, you know, it's as good as the days of the day I put it on there. Painted the whole engine for about eight bucks at the time, you know. I'm just saying, but well, uh, the other possibility is I have a I think it's a big tag M. I've got the original tag and the whole thing. But, and, and it's all been to this condition right here, ready to put together. Because I was just going to put the engine together kind of slick and neat and clean and then paint it green, the original color. Um, and it's, I think it's really old. And there's a possibility I would paint it a more greenish color green. A, a green with maybe an aqua tint to it or something. <clears throat> I may look into that, but I think the, I think there was a different color back in the uh, the uh, engines before the M's. I think there was a possibility that there was a different, uh, kind of like a nice olive drab color. But I think I might paint that engine that color as a, a tribute to the possibility it could have been that color when it was built. But, and I have all the parts, it, 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 flywheels and everything is already primed and ready to put together. So I probably should go ahead and assemble those parts and get them together. And, and that means I have to build a cart along the way. And I've got a cart going, so I just come along for the story. You know what I mean. You could be watching Gomer Pyle on the television right there. It's a possibility. Just click the button and there's old Gomer. You know, it's like, hey, Andy, coochie, coochie, coochie. You know, you could be watching Gomer Pyle. I'm just saying, come on back next week and we'll do this again.